Hello everybody and welcome back to basic. I had just finished filming an ASMR role play when it struck me that my Grubhub KFC order was on the way so why not you know risk my battery plug in the mic and do a story time for our side channel or just plug in the phone and use the normal mic because my voice sounds like shit on camera anyway. So I went with option number two and here we are. Actually earlier I filmed an entire hour and 20 minutes of this exact story time I'm going to tell you only it's going to be a lot shorter this time because I went off in 32 different directions. I'll probably do the same. KFC literally put like 20 different sets of silverware in the Grubhub bag as well as like two straws. I'm eating alone today but I mean we could eat together so I mean here you go. I'll just put this right behind you there. A little bit of crinkly ASMR for today's depressing story. I'm going to be telling you about the time that somebody called in a false tip saying that I was going to kill my husband on the spot. Yes, that happened. In fact, lately, since buying our very first home, I thought to myself, you know what? <laughs> Compared to the complete peace and quiet I've been experienced for the past year and a half, yes, the past year and a half almost, it's just been hilarious and sad and everything else and very emotional to think that I am going to own my first house on the 17th of this month compared to two years ago or three years ago I'm sorry whenever I was picking up potential hepatitis and HPV off of the ground and putting it in my mouth you know what I mean it's not funny like it's not funny but I make things like this a joke because I try not to take the memories that have really destroyed me inside and I try to make them a lot lighter because they're over now. We are where we are in our lives today. We are not what we were two years ago. Some of us are. What's even funnier is the person involved in the story used to put me down all the time about not having my kids if you're new here, I will give a little, a very small backstory on that. But anyway, they used to put me down all the time and be like, you're never getting your kids back. Like, you're, you're a piece of <laughs> a lot. You might have seen this person on our main ASMR channel before a few times. And then that person and I got into a very large fight. They did that to me. And now they unfortunately lost their own children. And their life has took a turn for the worse. And it's interesting I'm not sitting here wishing, you know, the worst on those people, but at the same time, I just find it very ironic. You know what I mean? Every single person who didn't believe in me back then, their lives at this time are in the worst possible place that, you know, someone's mind or someone's life could be. And I, I often wonder, I wonder, is karma real? Like, what went around came around to them? Or is it just they were never there they were never what's the word in the right place all along i don't know but um for those of you who are new here if you're just clicking on this video uh welcome my name is sarah most people on the internet know me as karuna and most people in real life know me as trash um i run two channels my uh asmr channel and i call that our channel because it's kind of a give and take you know uh you guys give to me i give to you you guys take from me and i take from you guys it's i believe that you guys are my true family over here you guys don't even have a fucking name because this channel is just all over the place so i always just say welcome back to basics so welcome back to basics um a little backstory before i dig into this like probably ultimately soggy meal because for some reason the kfc from my studio is only like five minutes away but um it took like 32 minutes to get here so i uh, i don't know i got the classic chicken for those of you who would like to know and care about these things or the classic recipe i have to take a bite i'm so hungry i want to go home before my kids get off the bus so snap snap better hurry this up um on a serious note though uh for those of you again who don't know and who those of you who are new in the year um from april 27th 2014 up until january 7th or january 14th 2017 my life was a complete hell it was 
it was honestly the worst somebody could get in my opinion in my reality for myself um in a mental form in a physical place kind of i mean i'm not in a third world country starving i'm not you know suffering and i wasn't then what i mean is i put myself from my decisions not what i was born into i made the decisions to have the things happen to me happen to me um i was the reason my children were taken from me um for two years extremely horrible situation in those two years um in those two years um i did not get to spend christmas with them for the first christmas uh for the second christmas it was the very first night we were actually allowed to have our kids sleep in our own home again the reason my children were taken away is because um, i was going through a lot at the time my husband was working 12 hour days i was severely depressed and alone i let go of myself i let go of the house i let go of um basically my kids i did let them go they were taken from me um i they were fed they were changed they were all of that but they just they didn't have mommy's attention they had what they needed physically down to what they like for example if they needed a diaper change they got it and that was it at the time um and to this day i battle in my head and i think did they really need taken away from me and the answer is yes they did they did and it took me two years to change completely change my life around at first it wasn't because i wanted to change i believed that the whole world was against me and it turns out it was my fault um but here we are in 2019 um i went from stealing breakfast into a giant from a giant eagle what's a grocery store um stealing breakfast every morning after heading up to the methadone clinic smoking you know potential diseases off of the ground and um a lot of shady things into buying our very first home buying furniture uh by myself and picking the colors of my kids rooms and they've been with me for three years now so going on three years um and the people who in the family who took my kids away from me and thought that they were going to keep my kids forever tried adopting them um without our knowledge things like that are legally no longer allowed to see them my life went from a zero percent to 120 percent um so just giving you guys that little backstory for the fact that i'm going to be bringing up the fact that in the time that uh this situation happened my kids were out of my care it was a last desperate attempt to have the kids kept out of my care when everything was going good because how cys works is i'm just gonna start eating now so i don't know how i'm gonna do this and talk basically to give a quick rundown of how cys works in the state of pennsylvania um first off it's very hard to get your children back i was one of the success stories i will always credit myself in a way for changing not only for my children but also being a positive story for those out there for the mothers who seemed to have been in the wrong place at the wrong time that is not justifying the mothers who go out and abuse their children and don't want them back once they are removed from their care and put in the system um it is to give hope that you can get your children back if they are taken from you or if cys is in your life right now it's just a matter of learning to accept where you are truly wrong and that the world isn't always against you but after my children were taken a large group of people did turn against me i mean let's be real when you meet somebody on the street somebody who's in recovery and they say oh i don't have my kids what are you gonna think you're gonna think obviously you did something to get your kids taken away from you do you know what i mean how cys works is they'll take they'll remove the kids from your care um you have to appear in front of a judge within the first few days the judge goes over why the kids were removed from the parents care um before that there must have been a numerous um set of cys visits for that to happen um the judge goes over it with you you go back to court within a month um no information in that time you gather information for cys or they just investigate into your life and what you do they create a care plan in that time frame you have to change you have to do exactly what the judge and the cys caseworkers come up with in order to receive your children back into your care in the meantime your kids are usually placed with a family member if you do not have a family member present 
um, they get placed into foster care. In foster care, it becomes a lot harder. Thankfully and not thankfully for myself, my children were placed immediately into my mother-in-law's care, which was her plan all along. Someday I would like to sit down and um, tell that entire story and talk about um, everything, just everything, emotions, let go of why my kids were gone. After the care plan is completed, if it is, you have um, two years after exactly 24 months, your children, if you have not changed, will be placed out for adoption. That is what my mother-in-law had prayed for, hoped for, done everything in her power to do. Um, she wanted my kids. In fact, after my kids were returned in our care, she sued us <laughs> for full custody of my children. And then... Um, after the first judge said, that's impossible, absolutely not, what the hell are you doing? Um, she went for grand parental rights. The second judge denied her, went to Superior Court, Superior Court denied her, and then went all the way up to Supreme Court. Supreme Court was fed up, they reviewed the situation. Um, I have, I believe that I posted whenever I did get, I'm just waving a chicken around, um, whenever I did get the documents in the, in the mail, uh, prior to Christmas of 2018, saying with my lawyer it was a simple sentence from supreme court says this case is absolutely closed like fuck off <laughs> pretty much um she's no longer allowed to see my kids she lost it all but anyway after the whole extremely messed up situation that happened in the first year and a half it was six months before i received my children back in my care i had already done the care plan everything was great um after a care plan is presented to you and finished with cys you do what is called a permanency plan what a permanency plan is, everybody in your life during the time that your children were taken, for example, maybe your mother helped you out, your aunt, your sister, they will all come in and um, you sit down and you make a permanency plan of how these people in your life who were with you the whole time will continue to support you permanently while the children are back in your care. It's just something like paperwork. Everybody gets together in a room like a conference and they talk about it. Um, we done that. We move away. Um, our YouTube channel blew up. Everything was doing good. I started making a real income, like a real income. Um, and we were about to get the kids back. And one day... <laughs> We moved into this t temporary house, okay? When my kids got taken, we were evicted. We were evicted because the landlord was my mother-in-law's best friend. Landlord said, the house is disgusting. CYS took your kids. Get the hell out of my property. We got the hell out of their property. Moved into a place up into, it was like a mine town in my town. Tight little area in between one county or one township and the next. Um, literally right on the line. And um, basically what happened was the neighbors next door I went to school with, we were all buddy-buddy and everything seemed great. The guy who lived across the street helped me. Um, literally, he was the one, only one there who supported me during that permanency plan conference. It was crazy. Um, it was just, a, he was a very nice person. He found out I was moving and got very depressed. I was his only friend at the time. Um, he was my only friend. Um, we had to get out of there. I just ate a big piece of fat. <clears throat> mm -mm. I thought I ordered the three piece. There should be another leg somewhere, but I guess not. Like, ew. Anyway. Um, we had to get out of there. Like, we were doing too well at that time to be in that musty, old, disgusting apartment. Um, CYS was all on our side. They knew what we were doing. Everything was great. My mother-in-law was furious. The kids were removed from her care after being in her care for a few months because she was caught selling drugs um, with my children in the car. Um, so the judge, we showed the judge a recording that my husband got, thankfully. Thankfully. Who knows to this day if he didn't catch her on camera what would have truly happened. Um, so my mother-in-law had a vendetta for us after that, even though we did forgive her and let her see the children when they were um, taken home. But again, then she came back and sued us without our knowledge, and we took her from her for going on two and a half years going on three soon 
Um, to make a long story short, as I, I am starting to go off topic, as if I, like as the same that I did whenever um, earlier, we had to get out of that neighborhood. I found a nice house in the town beside it. Um, county, township, still in the same vicinity. But we weren't going to be able to rent it until like another month and a half. We needed out. Found a temporary little apartment in the crappiest part of town. Nobody liked that. <laughs> Nobody was having us move down in this area. It is like the crap area of our town. It is just disgusting. We moved down there anyway because, again, it was only going to be a month. During that time, everything was great. Um, my kids, here's the story. Here's how this happened. My children had a pediatric um, appointment for my son to go back to school. It was like a vaccination checkup, and my daughter just had her yearly checkup. Everything's great. I think the last documents actually to send up to CYS before the kids could finally be returned home. I might be a little bit off on this time frame, but the same, but the vendetta was still the same or whatever you want to call it. That's probably not even the word to use. Okay. Go up to the pediatric appointment. My husband's real dad was there. He was there because I think he had to be. He still had the kids full time. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, I'm just going to go along with the story. We were up at pediatrics. Everything was fine. All of us were in the room. And my daughter, I think, had to get shots. I, I believe it was my daughter or one of them. All of a sudden, um, my husband's dad gets a phone call. And he just gets up and leaves. And we're like, that's not like him. He never gets up and leaves. Very, He was very attentive, very everything until he started hitting on me like later in the future and uh his wife found out because uh my husband wasn't having that neither was i and yeah he kind of yeah that kind of went south real quick and then he kind of dumped his grandkids and never wanted to see them again so that's why we don't have any family in our lives right now because for some reason my husband's side of the family is just a disgusting ball of scum vermin it's just it's horrible anyway he leaves but I do give um, them a big thank you. Everybody except my mother-in-law, big thank you um, for at the time trying your best to help us get our kids back. Not my mother-in-law though, everybody else. It's what ended up happening. Um, he leaves the room. Uh, about five minutes later, he comes back. He's like, Victor, can I talk to you for a second? Vic gets up and leaves the room. Um, I'm with the kids. Kids are done with the pediatric appointment. I take them out. I was like, this is odd. I never really get to like be by myself with them. You know what I mean? They're not fully in my care yet. I go out. Um, Vic and him are like, okay, we got to go. We got to get going. Um, Sarah, I'll meet you at home. I just got my license. I was like, what are you talking about? You just, what? what? <laughs> Where are you going? Why are you leaving me real quick? And he's like, no, we got to go. We just got to go. We got to go. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I get very upset when my husband my husband and I have not spent a day apart I mean like we've spent probably two days 48 hours apart in the past like eight years except for whenever the kids were initially taken and he was not allowed to see me or my myself see him <laughs> this is not funny but it's funny because like we are never apart we are always knowing what each other are doing like always right this, this motherfucker leaves. He just drives off with my kids in the car, like, into the sunset after a pediatric appointment. I'm just standing there confused like an idiot, sitting there. I call my neighbor, um, who him and I had gotten to an argument about, a, like, a week earlier um, because we moved. We had to move. He got very upset. I explained this earlier. All of this has a part in it, and I'll, I'll like, bring in the crazy, like, finale soon. He, I call him. And I'm like, hey, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Like, Vic just kind of, like, left me up here, like, at the pediatrics office. You know, my kids were, my kids left with him and, like, his dad. And they didn't tell me anything. And I'm, like, really concerned. I think something's wrong. I think somebody may have died or something. Because, like, they wouldn't tell me a goddamn thing. They leave. I'm talking to my neighbor. He's like, oh. He seemed, like, real sketchy, right? He's like, I can't fucking, how do these people do mukbang? He's like, oh, very suspicious. 
I don't know, like, how are you doing? I'm like, oh, we're good. He's like, how's the new house? I'm like, good. I drive home. Well, no, I sat there and I remember smoking a couple cigarettes, scrolling Facebook, waiting. I blew up his dad's phone. I blew up Vic's phone. Nobody's answering. I called um, his dad's wife. She hated me all the time. She's hated me forever. And she always will. And that's fine. Um, I hate her too. I hate you too. Why? But anyway. Um, I go home and my husband's there. Rick's just casually chilling. He's just chilling at the holiday and at our new crappy little apartment, tent apartment. And I have been like freaking out, blowing up his phone. He would not answer the phone until I got home. And I'm like, I walk in, I'm like, Vic. He's like, oh, hey, babe. And I'm like, hey, sups. What, what, <laughs> what's going on? And he turns around. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I just got back from the police station. I'm like, what? Is, what are you talking about? I'm like, what happened? I immediately thought it was something with my mother-in-law. Like, she tried to come kidnap my kids or something. Because her, like, idea, apparently, we found out, was, like, she was going to take my kids the last time that she ever saw them and drive off into the sunset. She told my mom that. And, like, we're like, what? Like, those were the exact words. Like, she was going to drive off into the sunset with my kids and never come back. I don't know if she's going to leave the country or something. Um, crazy. I'm like, what do you mean? You were at the police department. He's like, yeah, he's like, uh, I'm just trying to be real calm about this because just letting you know, uh, yeah, somebody called in and said that you were going to kill me today. He's like, I'm sorry. I could, and then before I could even like accept whatever apology he was trying to like get out before like the devil unleashed its hell on him. I was like, what are you fucking talking about? <laughs> like, and then he probably got scared because like literally they made it so serious that it probably looked like whenever I snapped on him, I was going to, <laughs> I'm kidding. But, uh, he was like, um he's like yeah he's like somebody just called into the police station earlier and said that like they talked to you this morning and that you were planning on killing me yep you know how humiliating that is first off whoever did that which we know but like to this day this person will not accept that they did it but you'll find out that it was like a group planned thing i'm not even kidding like, I am the type of person I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that in the past I have been like, oh, everybody's ganging up on me. Like, you know, being that type of person, I will accept my, my, um, what do you call it? Mistake. Like, I will accept my mistakes. This situation, they all ganged up on me. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, excuse me, where was I? Oh. I just started snapping. I was like, what are you fucking talking about? Like, that is so serious. I'm like, why has nobody contacted me? I'm like, why would you not tell me? I'm like, you're my husband. He's like, because a cop took us right out and we had to go like right up to the uh, police station. I guess they had to go up to the police station. Um, the detective, the guy who was with my husband's dad up at the pediatrics who came with them whenever they left, I guess, was the detective. Went up to the police station. Um, Vic got questioned. Vic's dad got questioned. Everybody in the family got called and got questioned of what Miss Sarah's doing. First of all, the person who did this, you're brilliant for doing this. Even in my, like, revenge days of, like, getting people back and, like, people I don't like and doing, like, crazy weird things to them, like, out of spite since I can't kick anyone's ass. Um, yeah, you're brilliant and that was a great plot and great idea you humiliated me you degraded me you made me feel very 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 small that day and you did it is the last attempt for my mother-in-law to get uh my kids back. i was gonna say her kids because it's so serious <laughs> how she made these kids as if they were hers like i've spoken about how this woman had taught my son to call her mommy like i remember we kept going over her visits in the beginning and like my son would just like go up to her and be like mama like he was just learning how to say do you know how like sad that is like sad and sick that is it's so gross and uh so many other things i could tell you about like so many things i snap out on vic he's like he's like i'm sorry he's like i had to go up and answer questions i was mad at him because i was like why why like what about me you know what i mean like but i guess he had to i think about it back when and maybe he was scared you never know they made it so serious allegedly or apparently on the phone that like i was truly going to do this to my husband like they were like apparently oh he needs to get out of there now she told me this morning she was going to end him and that's the word end him please keep that in mind for later 
We're going to keep this as a clue for later, guys. Oh, shit. I ordered mac and cheese, and they... Oh, it's in there. Um, Where's my biscuits? Oh, I ate one. I'm not even paying attention to what I'm eating. I'm just, like, probably eating slop. I'm sorry I keep going off this. I'm trying to do a mukbang. I don't know how you people do it. Like, kudos to you. I ended up having after that, um, after I, like, freaked out on Vic and he told me about it, I called the police. Now, the police station. <laughs> a guy who answered it. His name was Officer... Oh, what was it? I'm sorry, with a Q. Officer Q. I'm just gonna use that. Um, some people from my... He's since retired. Or, was he fired or retired? One of the two. He's a young kid. He's an idiot. Anyway, um, <laughs> he answered the phone, or he calls me back, because I had to call the police station, whenever you call a police station, they, like, don't talk to you right away with an officer, they have an officer call you back on a block number, he calls me back, he's like, oh, Mrs. D, he's like, how are we doing today, and I'm like, I'm great, how are you, like, you know what I mean, like, great fucking talk, um, this motherfucker's like, He's like, oh, so, um, yeah, what, why are you calling me? I'm like, yeah, um, can anybody want to, ex does anybody want to explain to me, like, why somebody called the police today and said that I was going to kill my husband? And he was like, oh, yeah. He's like, Mrs. D, we got a tip that has since been, um, proven false and the case has been closed. I'm like, what case? I'm like, it has literally been, like, three hours and nobody is telling me what is going on. What happened? And he said, oh, your old neighbor called and said that you were going to, um, that you guys were walking together this morning and that you were going to end your husband. And I'm just like, well, sorry, something's, there's like shit on my hands and also something from the software thing. I'm like, well, good talk guys. Like good talk. And then he's like, oh, Mrs. D, um, have you filed your taxes for the year of 2008 or 2017? And I was like, what like why does that matter where are you he's like oh because we got a report from somebody in the family that you weren't paying your taxes and all of this fucking comes together and i'm like where in god's name does it matter to you number one which i did of course um number two <laughs> what in the hell is going on like i am sitting here nobody is telling me any information he blatantly tells me who told him or who called this morning he said my neighbor the only neighbor i had was that guy that i was walking with the same guy who apparently a week earlier my mother-in-law visited his house for information to take to the lawyer to sue me oh it gets so much deeper seriously there was a conspiracy in my life that ended up being real and jesus christ like i said earlier whenever i was like these people are against me no like at the um at the end it was they were literally like i'm not even kidding um fast forward he was an asshole on the phone he was horrible i get off the phone he's like oh you don't have to worry about anything though They're, they'll be figuring it all out you know obviously there's nothing to be worried about sorry that this happened bye i'm like thank you for causing so much stress in my family today like thank you so much my kids were just like casually left who knows where they even went I don't know if they were at the police station. You know what I mean? Like, where did my kids go? I guess they dropped them off afterwards, but it bothers me because what in the hell? You know what I mean? Well, anyway, I'm getting like way off topic here. I hang up the phone with him. Everything's taken care of. Who did I call before I went home to Vic? The neighbor guy. Let me tell you a little story about him. I said that him and I got into a fight. To this day, him and I are like, we're okay now. Like, we're friends. You know, he helped me a lot whenever my kids were gone. He was the only person there for me. But he was also very bitter when I left because he had different hopes than I had. He thought that, like, we were going to, like, run away in the sunset together like my mother-in-law with my kids. Like, And that just unfortunately wasn't the case. Um, my husband never liked him because he spread a rumor. It, it, like, rumors that we were together. Horrible things that, like he apparently said that really hurt me because I'm the type of person I blatantly will tell you who I slept with like I will blatantly be like yes this was my partner this was my partner this was my partner um but this person was never my partner you know what I mean it was very bitter that I didn't want to be with this guy that I didn't want to be with him I move away and he loses his best friend 
Um, the week that I moved away, my mother-in-law uh, apparently stopped down to his house. My mother-in-law was planning before I got my kids back to get my kids taken away for good. She hired a lawyer in a county beside us. What am I fucking doing? <laughs> she hired a lawyer in a county beside us. This was before she went after us for full custody. This was before she went after us for grand puncture rights. She hired a lawyer to look into my life to see if there was anything she could bring up at the last court date on the day that they gave me my kids back. She never showed up. That is because she was planning other things. She stopped down to this neighbor's house. She says, um, he told me everything. And he says, you know, oh, I was like, oh, no way. Like, I didn't say that. Of course you didn't. You're the one who called in the tip. Anyway, he says that she's asking her or asking him all about me and like if we've been together and like if we've been, you know, seeing one another and like when, um, when is Vic gone and when are you always with me and things like that. And apparently when she came there, she was really messed up and things like that. In the meantime, um... <laughs> He answered, I guess, and said what he had to say or whatever, and then for some reason, later that week, he calls in a tip about me. Sorry, I'm like spilling shit everywhere, but anyway. The words that were used was, um, I was going to end him. Days later, like, when I called him back, he said that the police called him and said hey we're looking into uh, mrs d here um apparently there's a tip and i'm like how did you know there was a tip before there was any tip this happened at like 3 p.m you're saying somebody called like earlier that day like the police can't lie about that you know what i mean at least i hope not it didn't make sense he called the tip okay my mother-in-law was planning on getting all this information to go on the day that the kids were returned to me to tell them what do you know how people in weddings like they're like what do we have excuse me something to put in we don't want you to get married it's like her with my kids like we don't want you to have your excuse me kids back um yeah same exact situation she never showed up like i said so instead she just kept it very private and um after that we forgave her for everything that happened for her taking you know not allowing me to speak to my kids on christmas for her you know teaching my son to call her mommy and still let her see my kids because that was her, her the only grandma who ever cared at the time you know what i mean like really messed up things like that we still let her see the kids and then she goes after us for full custody of my kids like you're crazy point is since i have like not summed up this damn conspiracy yet what had really happened was is that my neighbor got upset with me that I left. He was missing me, he was jealous, and out of spite, when my mother-in-law showed up at his house, he gave her, or lied to her, or said something that I was planning on running away with him um, later that day. I'll still never know why he said that, but later on I'll explain, like, or like, I'll explain in a minute. Um, and then later on that week, there was a false tip called in that I was going to murder my husband. Um, interestingly enough though i called him and he was like so suspicious on the face like i don't know what's going on like he knew what was going on he made the tip like hours earlier proceeded to tell me later on that it happened hours hours earlier that she showed up whenever she showed up like a week ago, you know what i mean earlier it made no sense and yeah so after that i guess i stopped talking to him um for a very long time probably going on since a few weeks ago um he texted me like things are fine but you know we don't talk anymore but it was all a plot that he participated in out of spite for me um to get back at me from my mother-in-law my mother-in-law pretty much wanted every last piece that she could grab on to keep my kids so she called in a false tip on me, hoping that, or he called in a false tip probably for her, hoping that it would be documented or something would happen to where I was taken away or I have no clue, but basically so my kids could not be returned to my care. Like something crazy outrageous. Do you know what I mean? The last hope, the last glimmer of hope to hope that, you know, that she is going to murder her husband and like, it's crazy. Um, you know, I had recently 
gotten my gun permit back because whenever um, CYS removes kids from your care, if you have any gun permits or any like access to any weapon, they take them away from you and you get them back whenever you get your kids back. I was allowed to, um, I had guns. I guess maybe, you know, they used that against me. I don't know, but it never went anywhere because it was never real. <laughs> it's just, it's a crazy story that happened to me. And that's just one of many, you guys, like, I want to bring in so much more into the situation to explain why this was all planned out so perfectly. Like, she went to this lawyer and brought photos of me from my stalker. If you guys remember him, a tile just fell off the wall. Um, from my stalker, whenever I was seeing his girlfriend at the time that I didn't know was that she, because she claimed she was gay. <laughs> She's like, I'm not full gay, everything. Then the one day, that's how I met my stalker at the time was um her and i like this is another crazy like quick story um how i even met my stalker was i was seeing this girl that i met in rehab like 2010 this girl messages me on facebook she's like oh my god sarah i'm like oh my god megan i miss women hi and like we meet up and this guy picks me up with her in the car and i'm like hi and she's like oh that's my neighbor and he plays along with it. Like, what is this? Do you know what I mean? Like, what is going on? So we go to the house, like, her and I are hanging out. I'm like, I'm like, blatantly saying like, oh, you're so beautiful. Like, I miss you. Like, I would love to like, hang out with you more. And he keeps like pacing back and forth in this hallway corridor. And, and I'm just like, what's with your neighbor? And she's like, oh, he just probably wants to go home. Come to find out like two days later, he messages me on Facebook. He's like, hi, I'm actually her boyfriend. I'm like, no she's gay and he sends me like all these lewd photos and i'm like no 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 <laughs> fast forward um i accepted it and he seemed to accept it too so this girl and i start like kind of seeing each other on and off and i sent her some photos and he got into her phone took the photos like i have a whole video on this like a whole video on this um on our main channel like back before i made it a full-time asmr channel and like it was hell on earth from there when my mother-in-law found out about my youtube channel um i guess my stalker contacted her or she no i'm sorry she contacted him because she noticed i was seeing that girl like way before my kids were taken mm. a little bit in the time like right in between kind of fucking like she meets up with him they all go to the lawyer's or he sends her the nude photo of me she takes it to her lawyer's office meets up with the neighbor who calls the cops on me saying that i'm gonna they were all just like let's hate sarah day because like sarah accidentally started dating a girl she didn't know like no was like turned by i guess like i don't like okay like that's fine do what you want i'm not you know anything with you but like really you're gonna lie to me and then like almost get me killed because then then the stalker makes up this false craigslist ad i've posted this before <laughs> It's not funny. It's horrible. I almost got killed. I could have been killed. This motherfucker makes a Craigslist ad. And I still have the text messages that I went on a Facebook Live once showing them. That's how much drama was in my life at this one time. He makes a Craigslist ad saying like, oh, um, my name is Sarah D. Like if um, you can give me a ride to the methadone clinic in Central City. Because it was the first place I lived. Oh, like, um, yeah, just let me know and come out to my house at 630. I don't have a phone. I can't reply to this ad. Just show up. And this old man shows up at my door in exchange for like, you know, favors. And this old man shows up at my door at like six in the morning, 630 in the morning. He's like, he's like, hi, I'm here about the ad. Like I open the door. I'm in spaghetti strap shirt. I'm in really like short shorts, booty shorts by myself. My gun had been taken away, obviously, because of CYS. My husband was not allowed to see me because of, um, the fight that we had gotten into which led up to the day but anyway long story short shows up at the door knocks on the door i open the door 6 a.m thinking it's vic or something it's this old man oh my god and he thank god thank you god this man was so sweet he was like yeah i'm here about the ad like i'm like what ad and he like shows me on his phone and i'm like i didn't write that ad and i like break down crying this, this like poor guy thinking like he's getting a ride or like gonna take me a ride for favors <laughs> he'd still ask if i wanted a ride he's like you don't need to give me anything i'm like no no i'm good like no thank you like <sighs> what if somebody would have saw that and showed up and wouldn't have taken no for an answer this is the, the crazy fucking like 
excuse my language, but the crazy, inhumane crap. Things that I could never equal up to in my thought that I could be so vengeful at one time of life. That is nothing. Like, this whole phone call or whatever that the time that apparently, you know, I was going to be, or I was going to kill my husband, that is nothing compared to the things that happened in the time my kids were gone. It was a smear campaign, or if you will, I guess, if you want to use that word, it was a huge plot for my kids to never be returned to me. My mother-in-law made friends with that man, the man who, um, who could have had me killed and raped. I'm using those ver like those like serious words in that situation because that is exactly what could have happened. What else could have happened? They were coming over for tea? No. Like the ad said, if I need a ride to the methadone clinic, come at 6.30 a.m., don't call, don't text, just show up. Anybody could have came and said it wouldn't have taken no for an answer. I used to weigh like 109 pounds at that time of my life in 2016. I couldn't, I couldn't be, you know what I mean? I can't fight. Like what? I weigh 132 now, like, you know what I mean? It's crazy. I just spit. Um, I don't hope you saw it this time. Um, and she made friends with that man. She went over to the neighbor's house that I was best friends at his most vulnerable time, knowing that him and I got into a fight. He blabbed, he called on me, clearly, because that's what the cops said. It was the neighbor. And you think like, all of this for my kids, you were so obsessed with my kids that you needed to get them back. Those people, you know, the guy who did that or called and, you know, made that tip about me out of spite, out of, excuse me, hatred or whatever was going on at the time, out of hurt. Crazy stuff. But she befriended my stalker. That's the crazy shit. That is nothing. You know, taking my nudes to her lawyer, bringing up the nudes in court. Crazy. I could sit here and tell stories for days, you guys. Like, and that is why I keep bringing up like, oh, about my kids, about my kids, about my kids. Thank God my kids were not involved in any of this situation. They were involved in, you know, my mother-in-law saying that other things happened, forcing them to go places they didn't want to go whenever they were first removed and just horrible things. Like, thank, you know, I'm not thanking God at all because this ultimately was all my fault. It needed to happen. My kids needed to be taken from me. They needed to at that time in my life. In 2015, they needed to be removed from my care. I was severely depressed. I was being completely neglectful to myself, to my kids, to my family. Instead of like seeing that I needed help, she took that and used it against me. And it went to fucking hell from there. And then finally it got so bad to where I will never forget I was sitting in my counselor's office in the methadone clinic. I was bitching to her and she's like, shut up. And I'm like, what? I will never forget that. She's like, shut up. And I'm like, like, what does that mean, girl? She's like, shut up. I'm like, what do you, why? She's like, you need to stop. You need to stop blaming everybody else. And you need to start fucking realizing that not everybody is out to get you. It's you that's out to get yourself. You need to stop worrying about drama. You have nothing going on in your life right now. You need to get up and start worrying about yourself and changing yourself and stop listening to everybody else. Like, I was so ready. I was so ready to end it. Like, so ready. Of course, I would have never done it, but I was so ready. So. Instead of just, like, seeing that I needed help, she used it against me because she wanted my kids. She wanted my kids for some reason. To this day, my husband and his sister ew, says that um, the reason that she once wanted my kids so bad is because, like, she messed up with her own kids, like, severely. All of them, all three of them. Um, I don't know. I'll never know to this day, like, why my kids, you know. Vic's brother has kids, like why not your own kids, like, Vic's sister or brother, like, why not them, why my kids, why my kids, like, creepy, creepy, I want to hear something else creepy before I go, um, <laughs> I have implants, right, uh, Vic's sister visited, I think it was, let, no, yeah, it was last Christmas, and she said that, uh, she's like, oh yeah, mom's gonna, mom wants to get breast implants, because Sarah has them, we're like, what, followed by when I got a Bengal cat, what was it, two months later, she's like, she called just to tell us she's like yeah she's like mom said that she's getting a bengal cat 
she didn't say because of me at this time but she's like mom's getting a bangle cap we're like w why and then every time we get on our bikes like whenever um like every other weekend my mom will watch the kids and then like every other weekend they will sleep over for a night my uh the, we take our bikes and we drive out to where we used to live in this place called central city it's a long road out there it's really nice it's fun to drive on the bike um we're driving up and this <laughs> motherfucker drives past us and like doesn't the regular motorcycle wave like or on any bike is like you put your hand down like you're turn signaling on a real bike or whatever and it's just a wave she's like this girl's like and we pass by and i look at vic in the rear view and he's just dying laughing on his motorcycle about to like kill himself on the bike like just straight up like laughing we pull over to the gas station he's like that was my mother we die this woman wanted to get implants then she wanted to get light boy forgot to add that in there then she wanted to get a bangle cat then she wanted to get or she did get a scooter what is this yet she hates me <laughs> I have no idea. I forgot I ordered a chicken little. I am done, guys. That is and concludes the story time of the time that somebody fucking called in a tip against me saying that I was going to kill my husband. This was a time in my life that I laugh about and cry about and suppress. And I don't go back to many of those memories. Someday I will sit down and tell the very serious story. But for now, we can laugh and be thankful that it is 2019 i'm about to about have my own home like own it like own it like haha -ha, like this is mine i'm not paying rent anymore you know what i mean my kids are thriving they just want for nothing man they are so happy i have 850,000 people that love me for who i am it's a beautiful life nowadays it's a beautiful fucking life and those people that told me like you will never be anything are in the same position I was and you know what I wish them the best I hope they get their kids back I hope they change and they realize what I had to realize and they have to flip their lives upside down for those kids because that's what really matters thanks for watching bye